Okay, I'm going to call this meeting to order. This is the workshop meeting of the Board of Directors of the Vicios Water District for Wednesday, May 24th, 2017. And can I ask Director Sonoma to lead us in the pledge? Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, we have a roll call, please. Here. 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 Okay, next is adoption of the agenda for this workshop meeting. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded to adopt the agenda for tonight's workshop meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 Vote, say no. Here's unanimously. Okay, next is public comment. Persons wishing to address a matter not on the agenda may be heard at this time. However, no action will be taken until the matter is placed on the future agenda in accordance with board policy. We have one speaker, Mr. Hunsicker. Oh, is this for the, the gen, I'm sorry. Okay, seeing no other uh, request to speak, uh, we'll move on to the uh, Agenda item one, budget and rates review and update. All right, I'll jump in there. Thank you, President Ellitharp, and good evening, members of the board. Uh, the only items in front of you tonight are informational and uh, review and update items on both the budget and the rates, upcoming rates. Um, these items have been reviewed pretty extensively. They've been the subject of finance committee meetings, board workshops, such as tonight, and board meetings in the past. And tonight's review is the last step on the way to our scheduled June 7th meeting which would be for the adoption of the budget and for approval of the Prop 218 notice that will be going out subsequent to that. Uh, Finance Manager Fusco will be walking you through the budget and Assistant General Manager Scaglione will be taking you through the rate uh, presentation here. No action is being requested tonight. This is simply an informational update, but we'd certainly like to get any uh, thoughts and direction you may have so that we can bring them forward to the, uh, the June 7th presentation. Most of what you'll hear tonight regarding the rates has to do with our standard customer. We've talked about that before. And that's somebody who's in a single family residence with a 5 8 inch meter using 13 units of water. Uh, just so you know, um, in order to facilitate our customers' understanding of the rate impacts to them, we have installed a rate calculator on our website. Mm -hmm. So people can get on the website, they can download this rate calculator, they can enter what type of customer they are, single family, multifamily, uh, what size meter they have, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> and how much water that they use in a typical month, and it'll calculate their total combined water and sewer charge. The uh, rate calculator can be found at, uh, yes, sir. Quick question, is there a possibility of putting a counter onto that rate calculator? I mean, I know you go to all this work, yeah. but my question is, if only three people use it, yeah. what's the point? Great suggestion, we already incorporated that. We coordinated with IT, and they put a counter on there. Okay. And we're trying also to, to discern how many of them are unique and new users versus somebody who's getting on there multiple times. So we'd like to get an idea, is it widespread or is it just a couple people hitting it hard? But thank you. But empl employees won't be counted as we, counts. We will discount all employees tapping in there for counting well, they, Exactly. They may not know, though. If, it, yeah. if an employee goes on from home, I would do Yeah, know? if they go on from home, but uh, I, don't, I don't anticipate well, I would that. Have to that. I can see them doing it from their desk. Yeah. Even then, you wouldn't know. Time. We'll, we'll try to get, we'll work with IT and see if there's a way to sift, sift that out. So the calculator can be found at the website www.vwd.org forward slash rates. And in the middle of that page, there's something that talks about a, a rate calculator. You click on that, and then you can click on a highlighted in red, and you download this. It's an Excel file. So it's, it's pretty easy to use, and all the information that a customer needs is located on their bill. So those three pieces of information are on everyone's bill. Uh, and that website also contains other information such as the cost of service study and other things that will help people better understand the rates. So with that introduction, I'm gonna ask Mr. Fusco to come join us and lead us through the budget conversation. Thank you, General Manager Prune, President Elthar, members of the board. Um, <clears throat>
tonight. I have a uh, riveting budget presentation for you. Move to approve. <laughs> 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 um, oh, sorry. That's okay. The humor is always good, right? Um, <clears throat> basically, the um, presentation is is fairly short, and a lot of it is is as general manager said, a lot of things that we've covered. But we're actually at a point now where we have a budget to present. We have all the pieces together, and and we can look at the budget as a whole document and go through it. <clears throat> I'll be referring to some, some of the pages in the budget as we go through the um, presentation. And I'd like to start off, though, with um, a general overall, okay, that's not working. The general overall, what we do as a district. Um, basically, our, our job is to provide water and wastewater services to our customers. Um, in so doing, we, we incur costs and we pay those expenses uh, to provide those services. We charge our customers for the services that we've provided. We collect and process the revenues that come into the district. At the end of the year, we transfer any excess operating revenues, less any operating expenses over to reserves. Um, along the way, we pay our debt service, we pay our interest and the principal on our debt. Uh, our debt is from our capacity, related to capacity projects, so the interest and in principal that are paid on the debt come from the capacity reserves. And we also, during the course of the year, invest in capital projects. And those capital projects are there to facilitate the services that we provide, and we pay for those capital projects out of the reserves. So that's, that's our cycle. Um, what that looks like in numbers as far as fiscal year 17-18, the budget that um, you have in front of you, the proposed budget that you have in front of you, looks like this. Um, we have about $53 million of operating expenses in this budget. Um, we're looking at collecting about $59 million in operating revenues, a transfer over to the replacement reserves of about 61 we have debt service to pay this year, $5.4 million, of which we're obligated through our bond indenture. Capital spending for fiscal year 17-18 is about $15.8 million in projects themselves, and that's a combination of replacement projects and capacity projects. And uh, this year also, there's a category we call easements, vehicles, and equipment, and we're looking at spending about uh, $818,000 on that, so about $16.6 .6 million in, in CIP. Question. Dr. Martin. So that's a new category. So what did it used to be combined with total capital? Is that, is that a new, you said easement vehicles and equipment? You said this year. Oh, oh okay. Um, like, like, we, we never broke it out in, in prior years. It's always been there, but this year you were just breaking it out a little bit different. What's it been under in prior years? It was still under easement, vehicles, and equipment, and sometimes we would just put it all with capital. But yeah, just broke out of the line. How does that, roughly, how does that compare to fiscal year 16, 17? I've got a slide for that, yeah, coming up. Sorry, I got ahead of you. <laughs> That's all right, no worries. Um, <clears throat> the budget, putting the budget together, as you're, you're well aware at, at this point, uh, is, a, is quite a process, and this year we had um, three things going on at once. We had the budget itself, we had a cost of service study, and also uh, a rate analysis and, and a new rate model being developed. We've, uh, it's a very collaborative process with everybody here at the district, uh, working together from the people in the field, talking to their supervisors, talking about things that they're, they would like to have and things that they need in order to perform and provide uh, services. We also have the supervisors talking to the managers, the managers uh, working together with the finance committee and also the board of directors here in workshops just like this. And um, I broke it out into, broke the process out into two, uh, two categories, one of which is internal processes at, throughout the timeline and then public meetings and workshops. The internal processes can be summarized in this manner. Basically, it's information gathering, compiling, and doing analysis on that information. And we go through, and we just continue to do that, do analysis, figure out what information we need, and put the building blocks of the budget together and revise and refine as we go. 
Along the way, we also had uh, multiple public meetings and workshops. In um, January, we had one. We had the Finance Committee meeting where we just discussed the entire process of the budget, putting it together. In February was more the information gathering, refining, and um, doing the analysis. Um, we looked at the operating budget. We looked at projections of where we're going to end this fiscal year, 16-17. We looked at our staffing, staffing levels, what we had in 16-17 budget versus 17-18 budget, what we would need. Um, we look at our debt service, uh, see what we need there. We look at revenue projections and reserve projections for five and ten years. And, um, and then we had three public meetings in February. Um, the board of director, we had a, a workshop at this level to talk about the process. At the regular board meeting on February 15th, it was a discussion of the rate structure development. At the Finance Committee meeting, we discussed reserves, salary and benefit data, cost of service study, the rate structure in February. In March, we had more of those internal processes, just keep going, keep getting information, keep refining. Uh, we had three meetings there in March also at the uh, public level, a board director um, workshop, a Finance Committee meeting, and also at the regular board of directors meeting to discuss the rate structure and cost of service process. April. Um, we actually had a document in April that we could start to go through and, and review and figure out um, what we had, what we were working with. We had three public meetings <coughs> there too, again a finance committee meeting, uh, board of director meeting, uh, discuss the uh, cost of service study and also a budget workshop too to look at the five-year capital improvement program. And here we are in May. We've got a proposed budget for you. Um, we're at this meeting here. We've had a couple meetings to discuss the uh, cost of service and uh, rate structure. We've looked at the draft uh, public hearing notice, the Prop 218 notice. We've looked at that a couple times. And um, today we're going to go through the uh, proposed budget. In prior years, I've always been able to say there's no new debt for this budget. There's no new debt in this budget. And I get to say the same thing for fiscal year 17-18. However, there's a caveat. In uh, fiscal year 18-19, we are proposing some new debt. Um, and about $13.4 million in new debt in fiscal year 18-19. Why am I bringing it up now a year early? It's just prudent financial planning to estimate what we're going to need. As when, when we start looking at the capital projects and the spending on the capital projects, we'll see where that debt falls in also. However, we sti are still going to make our principal payments on all of our existing debt. So we're our principal, outside of adding that new layer of debt, we're going to continue paying down our debt over time. And for 10 years, we're looking at paying down uh, almost $21 million in debt. Director Snow. And John, uh, and maybe I missed it, but is this is this from this new debt that you're discussing? While I appreciate you're bringing it up, well, much more than a year in advance, I, you know, with all the finance committee meetings we've had and all the different workshops we have, I, I don't recall hearing that we were planning on issuing new debt in 1819. Is this did I just miss it, or is this the is this new? Is this like a new idea, a concept that came up recently as you guys were looking at the capital projects? We had discussed the possibility of new debt in the future and as we looked at capital projects and as we're looking at the capital projects and putting the five-year CIP together and looking at reserve balances um, yeah so it's it's new to this presentation absolutely is it so it, it kind of begs the question because I was you know and I'm probably getting way ahead here but I'm looking at you know our, our rate increase propo proposed of I've heard 3.9, 4%, somewhere around there, which considering that our, the Water Authority just recently announced that they're increasing their rates by 3.7, we're almost just basically passing along the, their, their increase. We're not really, there's only two, two to three tenths of a percent increase on our part. Is this, is this to make up because we're not doing a higher increase that now that we're gonna, now we're gonna take a, a, on debt because we're not doing 7% this year? The majority of the projects that are coming up are in the wastewater side. And that's where the debt is going to be spent, is on the wastewater side. 
So it, it, it okay. It's, uh, you know, not, if I could just address the debt. The debt is only in the capacity fund. Mm -hmm. We were waiting for Encino Wastewater Authority's capital project to see. It was presented to the um, rate agency as a placeholder, and that's exactly what it is. If we have, we did relatively conservative projection of growth. If we beat that projection of growth, we, we might not need the debt. But we gotta be prudent and put it in, in there. But it doesn't impact rates directly because this is all being picked up in the capacity fund yeah. for growth projects. And the capacity in the wastewater. Oh, sure. so, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Director. So specifically what debt? I'm sorry. You're gonna be going out with more debt specifically for what purpose? Oh, for the project? What project? It, um, they were in Cena Wastewater Authority, those related to growth, uh, the interceptor, the portion related to growth. Um, if it's early enough, or it, depending on how Rock Springs goes, it could be for Rock Springs as well. There's about four, five or six projects where we can carve out whatever uh, was related to growth. So we weren't burdening the replacement reserve funds, we weren't burdening, burdening the, the rate payers, it was all on it. So the reason it's being presented tonight is an FYI. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, nothing is being agreed to. Nothing next yeah. year will tackle that yep. when it gets there and say, exactly. hey. We have to wait till it plays out, but we got a plan for it. You know, uh, if, if, especially if the projection comes in lower, uh, you know, we have that capacity deficit keeps on getting bigger and bigger. So it's to try to address that deficit. Right. But just because you plan for it doesn't mean it happens. Correct. Yeah, we have, to, we have to see how the talk about at the time. Yeah, and as we move forward next year, we'll probably do something similar to this year, where the finance committee will get a kind of a sneak peek at that. And we'll let them know what the plan is and then receive any feedback from the finance committee as we move forward. Okay. The next, uh, actually, the rest of the presentation from this point is to look at the budget, the fiscal year 17-18 budget as compared to the 16-17 budget. See where we've increased, where we've decreased. Uh, this pie chart here, or this pair of pie charts is on your left-hand side is the 16-17 budget, 55 million. 17-18 proposed budget, 58.4. Um, water purchases, that big blue slice there on the right, has gone up um, because of several factors. Uh, we're looking at selling more. Demand is, is going back up and the cost of water is going up. So that, that slice of the pie is growing. Um, salaries and benefits are um, budget to budget uh, going up a little bit, about 77,000. In uh, the document that I read, uh, we are um, losing four places and we've reassigned some others. Uh, if, and if we lost four, I, I don't understand how come it went up. You know, help me there. I've got a slide for that one, too. Oh. <laughs> so, is it perks? Uh, the, the I know, I just hate waiting, cause, but then I forget. The remaining folks got raises, right? I mean, everybody came you know, through the MOU and... It, longevity of employees. Uh, yeah, salaries themselves actually went down year over year. Uh, benefits went up. And it's PERS, has to do with PERS. Yeah, there, there was four positions eliminated, but the people who are still here are also uh, COLAs and, and things. Mm -hmm. Longevity, absolutely. Um, the, there, there's five slices to this pie. Four of the slices are our biggest categories of expense. We, we have our water costs, when, when you look at our budget in total, we're looking at almost 50% of, of everything right there. Salaries and benefits, 27%. We have treatment, which is Meadow Lark, Mara Reservoir, Lift Station One, and Encina make up the 9%, uh, the $5.1 million there. We have the debt service, which I mentioned. Um, that's that's 5.4. Uh, and then th that last slice is everything else. That's insurance for the district, not employee insurance, but insurance for the district itself. That's legal fees, that's the materials and supplies, that's the outside <coughs> services, the consulting, that's the postage, that's the, that everything else is, is right there. Yeah. So then reading this, John, that our debt service, our pay down on our debt service is minuscule. 
it's it's very good. It, we, we have very low rates on our. I'm looking at ten thousand dollars, nine thousand dollars, between uh, seventeen and eighteen. Oh yeah, because we're yes. We're so you're we paying anything down? Ten thousand dollars. We're we're paying our principal down, so there's there's less principal outstanding, so our, our debt service goes down each year. Yes. Right, but only by ten thousand dollars. After a year's worth of debt service. We've only decreased our debt that we owe ten thousand no, dollars. This isn't the amount of outstanding debt. This is the payment we're making towards that debt in any given year. Okay, so then we've only we've only taken down that interest ten thousand dollars in a year. No, this is both, both years of principal and interest for both years, and typically what happens when you when you issue debt, you schedule payments so they're pretty much even, it's pretty level uh, uh, payment. So there's both principal and interest in both of those numbers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, but what I, what I don't see is with the difference between the two years is how much money? You tell me. Right, it's nine, like nine, you said, it's half. Like so that's the difference. So what's, what's the significance of that difference, I think, is what Director Martin well, is getting it'll, at. There'll, there'll be those differences throughout the whole period. They try to schedule it so it's relatively even, but it jumps up and down. I understand, but if we keep trying to pay down the principal, we say we're doing that. Right. And that number should be moving down. Uh, Better than nine thousand dollars in a year. No, the so payments like, are relatively. Like if constant. you have a house mortgage, yeah. you pay the same yeah. amount every month, but you right. but the principal starts going down every year because some of that payment goes to principal, some goes right. to interest. So right. what you're seeing here is the mortgage payment we're making. Some of that is going to pay down the debt. Some of it is going towards interest. I, I understand. What I'm saying is, only nine thousand dollars went to paying down the debt. No, no. I, don't, I think just the, the mortgage payment was slightly different this year or in the coming year than it was last year. So the difference doesn't mean all of that or a portion of that is just going directly to uh, principal. I don't know if we have a breakdown. Can you tell me what principal. our debt was last year and what our debt is this year? Yeah. What's the difference in our debt? I, I, I don't have that with me. I can, I can get it. Can Where's your yeah. guy has all that stuff? Sean, yeah, what? what is that? Yeah. He's well, got all that stuff at his fingertips. Yeah, he's, he's, at a, uh, he's at a conference this week, but yeah, I, I can get you that. That's not I, a problem. I had though. a question, but my question really was what he was just saying. Um, what I, I know what was about the mortgage, my payments stay the same, but at the end of the year, I can see where my principal amount went down, and that's the information you can get back mm -hmm. to us. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So this 9 and 10%, this amount of money, this is what we've been paying. That's it. We have to pay that every year, whether it's all interest or all principal or a combination thereof, like yeah. a mortgage. It's a com yes, and it's a combination thereof. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we pay principal on all the debt every year. Okay. Yeah. We don't defer principal. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Director Smith. John, so looking at your five categories here, water is what it is. It's, it's, it comes from the water authority, so I understand that. I think salaries is a huge victory this year um, to keep it relatively flat. Um, and uh, treatment is what it is. The, the one area that actually went up significantly is the smallest category. It's gone up 28% year over year, the other. And we talked about the other a lot the, the last meeting that I was at, the last workshop. Um, can you get, tell us a little bit more about why that's going up 28%? Um, electricity um, is one. That also includes um, outside repair. Uh, outside professional services like paving, which is one of our largest uh, increases this year on the water side. Um, I, I mentioned electricity, materials and supplies. There's also uh, improvements to our facilities. Um, and one thing that we have to keep in mind too is that when we look at 1617, there was uh, many things that were deferred like maintenance in, in these facilities. So what happens when you defer one year is it comes back in the next, and, and that's what you have there. Um, uh, information technology. Um, we're always keeping up on licenses, and as we get more and more programs, it seems inevitable. Uh, we have more and more licenses. If we look at the um, pie charts in, um, in numbers, 
and we just look at it at, at a very top level, um, all of those, those two pie charts make up that line <coughs> operating expenses. So that's, that's where those numbers come from. Um, if we look at 1617 versus 1718, we can see the changes there. Um, the change in revenue that we're looking at increasing is about $2.3 million or 4.1% overall. That's water and wastewater. Our operating expenses going up about 6.9% and uh, that's combined water and wastewater. Um, our increase in water purchases alone is $2.3 million. And our increase in um, treatment is um, for Encino was about $180,000 there. Our capital projects, looking at them year to year is, is always good to do. However, some projects are bigger than others. Some come on the schedule and go off the schedule rather quickly, while others take multiple years in order to work their way through. Now we're gonna look at the um, fiscal year 1718 column, the middle column, and then we're gonna break that down into each of our divisions, our water and our wastewater divisions. So if we follow the 59 million and the 52 million um, is what you have on your far right total. So now we're gonna look at each of those divisions independently of each other and we can see the increases and decreases in, in each of those. Um, we're looking at water operating revenues about 13.4 million and operating expenses there of uh, 39.8. Um, we're looking at a transfer from reserves of about $348,000 to cover that. In wastewater, uh, about 19.6 million coming in in revenues and 13.2 in expenses. We're looking at a transfer of about 6.42 replacement reserves. If we look at water by itself, and we'll look at it in a, in a pie chart by itself, we have water purchases, operations and maintenance, engineering and general and, and admin. When we look at the water purchases plus the operations, we're looking at 90% of the water operating budget. Um, <clears throat> the engineering is, is engineering, and the general and admin is basically the support of, of the operations. Numerically broken down into the categories, um, that, that $39.8 million looks like this in the middle column. And then if we compare it to 1617, we have revenues um, increasing about $2.6 million. Water purchases going up by 2.3. Operations increasing by about 700,000. Support going down by roughly 100,000. And G&A about breaking even. Um, the transfers to reserves in 1617, we budgeted at zero. For a transfer this year, we're actually gonna draw um, from reserves. And in Tom's presentation, when he talks about the rates and, and the smoothing over time, um, we can touch on that. So that's, that's the water division there, wastewater. Uh, we've got a um, same pie chart representation here. We have treatment, which is the largest slice of that pie, 48%, you know, and that is, again, Encina, Meadow Lark, Mar Reservoir, and Lip Station 1. Operations and maintenance, and uh, collection and conveyance, uh, the purple slice, those three there are 89% of the wastewater budget. 11% of the wastewater budget is to support those three activities. Numerically, it breaks down like this. Um, Revenues, last year we budgeted 19.9 million. In 17, 18, we're budgeting 19.6. What we're, there's a decrease of about $200,000. The rates in wastewater are not changing for 17, 18. However, we base our revenue budget on what's projected to come in in 16, 17, and then add a factor for growth, which is 0.3%. Um, that's why the 1718 budget number is actually less than the 1617 budget number. That's a little bit more accurate. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Are, are there any other 
sources of revenue for wastewater other than our ready to serve charge that's on our bills? Does that include uh, fees that we collect from developers or anything like that? In this, what you have, and it's on page, sorry. It's on page 21 of your book. <coughs> What you have is um, 17.5 million is the sewer s service fee. The, it's a flat rate, and depending on the, the type of single family resident or mobile home, or, um, it, it's based on that. We also have the reclaimed water sales, and that's a cost recovery basis um, for our efforts at Middle Arc. And then there's about $78,000 what we call other, and that is um, when we have to do plan checking, when we have to do inspections, um, th those fees all gathered up. So it's the total of those three line items that make up the 19.6. So if I understand this correctly, the, the, the two million for the reclaimed water cells is basically, that's captured down below in, in our cost for the most part, right? It's just kind of a wash. Mm -hmm. So we're really looking at 17.5, almost 17.6 if you throw in the other. Mm -hmm. But yet we're taking over $6 million of that and we're able to put it into our reserves. That seems like a significant portion of 17.6 million. Are we overcharging for our ready to serve? I mean, it seems like there's a, there's a lot, I mean, that's a lot of money. It's about 38% that we're gonna take and not we're gonna put into the reserves? We're, yeah, it's gonna go into the reserves. We also have, when we look at our capital projects that are coming up in the future, and we see where um, the timing of those capital projects and the amount of money that needs to be on reserve to spend for those capital projects, um, that's, that's what that 6.4 is going toward. Um, or if, if you were to reduce that, then when it comes time to pay for those capital projects, then you'd be looking at debt. Can we use, since 100% of our, our the, money, the money that we're transferring to reserves in 1718 is coming from wastewater, and, not, and nothing's coming from, we're actually taking money out of the reserves on the water side. Mm -hmm. Are, does that mean that those reserves can only be used for wastewater projects, and they can't, can they cross to water, or do they have to be separated? And then that shows you, page 99 shows you the capital expenditures too, which mm -hmm. actually that year you saw six million coming from uh, operating transfers for wastewater replacement, which was the 10 million going out for capital expenditures. The operating budget doesn't have depreciation because it's a cash budget, so in the corporate world you see uh, a big depreciation number on average, which you don't see here. So. Mm -hmm. It looks like a big number, but it's, it's eaten up in those uh, capital expenditures. And if, if you were to cross them, it would be a loan from one to the other. A loan. I, yeah. I think I remember that from our finance committee. Thanks. Mm -hmm. On page 21, just walk us through it, please. Uh, second line down, reclaim water sales. Mm -hmm. The only actual figure on the page of $1,069,000. Budgeted. One million nine hundred, almost double that. That'd be correct. The the actual in the budget, sure. Yeah. Well, why why that such a huge? Did we do something that uh, made us produce more or not lower and less than fifteen? Why is there such a variance between those two years? Um, when we're we were in the drought, and there's less flows going into Meadowlark to produce less reclaimed water. Okay, so that's purely, we only produced that much. So the difference is we did half the production in 15, 16, then what the budget 17, 18 is projecting? Well, it can't, it, it, it's not just volume. I mean, there's also the cost, the unit cost of the water too, so you're factoring selling more water and selling more water at a higher price. So that's why you quickly get to doubling 
and it's not all related. It's not because you're selling twice as much water. Well, okay, uh, and maybe I'm wrong, but um, <clears throat> I thought that everything we process at Meadowlark, which is sold to Carlsbad, is sold at a net zero. Uh, in other words, it, they pay for they pay for it, it whatever it is. Whether we produce a thousand gallons or a hundred thousand gallons, they they pay for the operation. Right. Is that correct? True. Tertiary. Tertiary. For the tertiary portion, but right. the cost of producing that water <clears throat> is going up. Electricity goes up. Personnel costs go up. Sure, but they pay it. They, yeah, that's the intent that they pay the the cost of re, so that we can recapture those additional costs required for tertiary treatment. This this Plus capital. This might help also if um, if you look down on where it says metal arc plant about halfway down on the page in the 1516 yep. column you have um, the actual was 2.8 million dollars yep. of expense we're projecting uh, 3.5 in 1718 okay. what did you do in 60 oh, projected in 1617 is 29 mm-hmm so that's a pretty close number because you had only one, two months to actually fudge the number because you're almost at the end of the year? Yeah, um, probably closer to four months because you're always a month plus behind from, from where you actually are. Um, but at three, I guess, my question is, are we at full production at Metal Arc? Are we producing 70%, 20%, 100%, 19%? A couple things. Uh, with Metal Arc, as you may recall, we had the Lift Station 1 expansion project and we also had the new Filter Media project. Both those projects over the last year have reduced the ability for us to produce recycled water. Now that both of those are up and running, we have, are at full capacity. Uh, however, during the rains, nobody needs recycled water, so we weren't producing at full capacity yet capacity at this time. What we anticipate though in the next fiscal year is that we'll be able to take advantage of the new capacity which is the higher pumping rate at lift station one along with our new filter medias to produce more recycled water next fiscal year. Okay, which is more than we've ever done before. Yes. The new pump, the new filters are supposed to make things fly. We have the ability to produce more recycled water now than we did a year ago. Oh, I mean, we, we, and we had a corresponding increase in flows to Encina right. mm -hmm. uh, during that time because of the projects you yeah. mentioned. We right. shut so, down the, we so shut down. Encina was more expensive to us yeah. because we were doing more because of these during projects. the shutdown. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you, John. The, um, so that's, that's the wastewater um, operating budget there. What we have next is the salaries and benefits. And here's just a quick pie chart. Uh, we got about, let's call them 108 full-time equivalent positions budgeted for uh, fiscal year 17-18. The total salaries and benefits are gonna come to 15.5 million. Two thirds is actual salaries and um, a little more than one third is uh, is benefits themselves. And if we look at that numerically, um, we went from at the bottom of the slide there, and this is on page 25 of your budget document also. We went from budgeting 111 and three quarter positions to budgeting 107 and three quarter positions, which is the elimination. It actually does work out to four positions because we're reclassing one from three quarter time to full time. Um, the salaries, as I said, went down to uh, $20,000 from year to year. The PERS went up um, about $110,000. The group insurance also uh, went up about $20,000 there. And then all the other, um, the FICA stayed for the most part flat. Um, the, all the other, the workers' comp, the FUI, the SUI, all, all those other taxes um, actually decreased a little bit when you have less employees, you have less of those taxes to pay. Um, so in total, it's, it's about $80,000 rounded increase 
uh, in salaries and benefits. Quick question for the general manager. Didn't we in discussion talk about this year you're also probably going to have positions that are leaving for whatever reason? Yeah, so a couple things. One, there's uh, several positions, at least one that we were we thought would be opening up and we're going to try to fill that in an alternative way. And we are concurrently working on developing kind of, I'll call it the org chart of the future to figure out what positions do we need in the future and where do we think those uh, positions will become open and how would we fill them. So um, I have worked with, uh, with human resources and we have kind of a chart that shows how many people on average we anticipate leaving district employment over the coming five, 10 years, and then trying to figure out where, where will those openings be and how will we, how will we or will we fill those? Thank you, sir. Uh, moving from the salaries and benefits, we go into the reserves. And um, as we had talked a little bit about here, is the um, transfers to reserves. In fiscal year 16-17, uh, uh, for budget, or I'm sorry, for water, that's the blue line with the uh, blue dots. Wastewater is the orange line with the, with the red stars on it. Uh, in 16-17, we budgeted for zero uh, transfer to reserves in water, and 17-18 is dipping below that line. That's the 348,000. And then um, due to the smoothing, it's the transfers to reserves in water are gonna come back and then, and then level off in future years. In wastewater, um, keeping the rate the same um, as the operating expenses go up and the revenues stabilize, basically, uh, there's going to be less of a transfer to the wastewater uh, operating reserve over time, but still uh, fairly healthy and, and being able to keep track with the capital projects. The capital projects. Um, themselves looking at these um, for the fiscal year 17-18 we've got about 64 million dollars worth of projects that are in process we call those carryover projects um, new CIP requests for 17-18 is about 34 million 35 million compared to 30 in the prior year and the future projects that's anything that's going to start after 17-18 uh, so any projects that are slated to start in 1819 out into the future are, are what we call future projects. S that went down in the 1718 budget uh, for a couple of reasons. Some of those may have moved up into the new requests, and um, some of them may just have been decided we don't need to do. <clears throat> The easements, vehicles, and equipment is, are the next three lines there. And we see um, we held that pretty tight last year in 1617. And this year, there's a couple vehicles that need to be replaced. And those are on page, let's get there. I should have put that one on there, too. Um, yes, 96. Page what? 96. Yeah. So in 96, you see the, the top little segment there is easements that we have. The vehicles and, and mobile equipment is the middle section. We're looking at about 567,000. Um, there's two new vehicles and five replacement vehicles. And facilities and equipment, um, it's a mix of new and replacement equipment. Um, and in total, the three components make up the $818,000. When we talk about the capital projects spending into the future and, and distribute the capital projects between water capital projects and wastewater capital projects, um, these are the costs of the projects. And, and this is how the spending would be done. If you look in 1718, there's that $15 million split out between water and wastewater. 1819, you see the, the wastewater go up a little bit higher and then start to come down and come down and then uh, head back up in the future. Whereas water just, um, there's not a lot of water, I mean, $5 million, $6 million is a lot of <laughs> water projects, but 
um, it, it tapers off. The, the bulk of that is in the wastewater and then having that transfer to reserves helps support those projects. Yeah, if you add those wastewater projects up over that five year horizon, it's about $47 million that needs to be uh, put aside. Can I have a question? And I know uh, we covered this in another meeting, and I'm sorry, I've just forgotten. We go back to equipment. Sure. Um, the uh, forklift at Metal Arc, what is that used to do? What do you lift? They don't want to know. We <laughs> actually. <laughs> uh, Mr. Director Martin, we actually have a lot of materials that uh, show up at the plant that are palletized and uh, they have to break them down and unload them by hand. Uh, we also have um, pieces of equipment that might show up and we don't have a forklift there so they'll actually have to take the backhoe down there, use chains, hook it up, it takes a lot of staff time. I really don't know why we haven't purchased a forklift for that site in the past. It's needed one for a long time. Um, so, yeah, we have, sometimes they, they bring it into the warehouse and then they break it down and they haul it down on a pickup truck. It just, it eats up a lot of staff time. It's actually kind of dangerous for staff on some of this stuff too. Okay. And the Ford Think cart? Um, we have a couple of carts and actually it's uh, uh, John's staff, but we have a couple of carts that uh, facilities use for hauling around paint, equipment, fixing that up. And there's two of them and uh, we replaced one last year and then we deferred the other one. Um, they're electric uh, carts, basically, <coughs> kind of almost like a golf cart. So they, they do use we those ever put in the budget? I'm sure we do somewhere in here. When we we sell the old ones off, I assume when they go to auction or whatever. That we do through the through the uh, general auction site for public agencies, yeah. Okay. And I don't know where that goes. So question. Thank you. Right, Thank you. Yeah. So the general auction site, we sell mm -hmm. them off. Yeah. That's open to the public. Everybody knows about it. Yes. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do we have our own employees bidding on those things? Um, we might, but it's it's through it's it's a website called Public Surplus, mm -hmm. so they have to register on that website and compete with everybody else who's bidding. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so that's that's the fiscal year seventeen eighteen budget proposed budget in a nutshell. Um, we hope to incorporate any changes that you have tonight into our recommended budget <coughs> distribute that budget to you in about a week and uh, then present that budget, the recommended budget with any changes on the June 7th meeting. Um, this, the, the budget process itself, as, as I said, starts at the ground up and uh, everybody's involved. Everybody has a say, we listen, we, we work, we refine um, and um, these are some of the people that I could find pictures of <laughs> that, that are involved. Some of these are some old pictures. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I look good. And it's like the <laughs> wanted posters at the post office. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Anyway, I'll have, be happy to answer any, any further questions. Yep. And now that we know that at least James prepares for anticipated questions, I'm sure you've anticipated this one. Can you t talk about the, maybe the, the top three areas year over year in the budget that we've been able to find some opportunities to cut? Um, well, this, the 17-18 budget has got the reduction of four positions. Um, and, and I think we, we eliminated three the, the year before that in 16-17. Um, the other that, that is always in there. We've held that steady for a good four years now at about that $3 million mark. Um, if that starts to creep up, then that whole revise, refine analysis process kicks into high gear and it's why, you know, why is this going up and, and what's necessary, what's not necessary and is it a one-time bump or is it, um, or is it something that's going to be going on in the future? Um, some of the other, as you said, you know, water comes from uh, San Diego, salaries and benefits uh, I addressed, and um, treatment is, is what it is, but there's been a lot of work done at Metal Arc. The costs of chemicals have gone down uh, year over year with trying different processes. 
Yeah, the, exactly. Yeah, the yeah the usage thereof. Right? Yeah, the cost continues to rise, but the the processes that Ed's crews put in place have really uh, saved us some money over the years. Thank you. Well, James had three things that could be done. Do you have anything that could be done to decrease this budget? <laughs> at a prior meeting. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Um, we spouted them off at a prior meeting. <clears throat> None of which we take them up on, by the way, but it was just well, interesting to hear. Did we? No, I don't think so. No. no. Not yet. We didn't take them up on anything right. yet. Yeah, you're talking today. about deferral of capital projects? Yeah. yeah. We're waiting for that to die moment, which I assume is this year. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Hell. <laughs> that one tenth of a percent. That <laughs> well, it's still, it's still, it's still well, that's still. That's a item yet. Yeah, no. Whether it went up so. or down a tenth, it's still a tada. It's the final number. My <laughs> gosh, you don't live. You, you, you have a small expectation of tada. I'm looking for something really tada. No, that was last year we had it. That was last year. Yeah, <clears throat> we, we're done with that. We won't go back there. So, is there anything you can see that could be cut? I think it's a. I think it's a very conservative budget the way it is. Um, that, yeah, there's there's always things that you can cut, but then you're, you're deferring, basically, and going through the process and going through that long list with the multiple pages, uh, where we had batteries and we had them down, you know, rounded to the hundred dollars. Um, we go through that with a fine tooth comb, and, and we find the things. When things present themselves throughout the year that were on that list, and we determine that we don't need them. <clears throat> we let our purchasing supervisor know, hey, this, this, you know, you shouldn't see a purchase order for this. Um, and then, I, I would say, that, yeah, I, I think it's very conservative. I, th I think compared year to year, um, in total, we were at, um, including, including the cost of water and treatment, we were at a um, water and wastewater combined a seven percent increase year over year budget to budget, which is. Uh, as, as a finance person, I think that's uh, good. Well, you're, you're our finance guru, so uh, I, I look at that and I go, because I remember last year <laughs> we went through this process quite differently than this year. Uh, <laughs> there was one of the members of your staff that wasn't quite happy with the amount, and but his wife told him not to say anything, but he did anyhow. <laughs> we all remember that, I'm sure. <laughs> um, I certainly do. Uh, but So you're comfortable that if we go with this 4%, we're in pretty good shape. Um, I'm looking at the expense side of, of what we have. And if we were going to look for cuts, that, that's where the cuts would come from. Um, I'm, I'm comfortable with the uh, suggested expenses that, that are in this budget. I think we can definitely uh, get a year out of this. Yeah, one of the things that we always factor in that doesn't get a lot of conversation is the level of service of the services that we're providing. So when we look for cuts, we're certainly looking for things that we can cut that don't significantly or materially affect the level of service sure. that we provide. Anything beyond that is probably a broader discussion that needs to be take place with the board. Yeah. Oh, sure. That's great. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. Well, I, I would just like to say um, I feel very comfortable with this budget because I know this board and this entire staff at every level has really put in a lot of effort to scrutinize every little thing. And what's important to me uh, um, as a representative of the ratepayers was when I was to, that I wanted to fulfill the, the, that we would maintain our level of service and we would be reliable and we would be proactive and we wouldn't do what districts have done where we defer and end up that big scramble to, to try to catch up. You all know I believe really strongly in our assets, and one of them is I do believe it's our employees. And if I read the salary benefit thing you were saying on that um, the little page in here, it had said we've only the budget change in one year is eighty thousand dollars. Seventy-seven thousand in total between salaries and benefits. Eight, so eighty thousand dollars. So I was looking at $80,000 and dividing it by the employees and realizing that's only $70 a month per person. That's all the improvement was for them. Maybe there were other great things, but I, I'm, you know, I, sometimes you don't take it down that little. I do think there's a couple ways we could save money that I'm not going to get into in this budget. There are things that we didn't really look at, but 
Um, I compliment all of you on it. And seeing um, in the in the what was the aqua the thing on the line about districts of talking about 36 and seven and double digit increases, I just applaud every single person involved. In it. And, uh, I think it's very well done and very well documented. And I, I know it was. Uh, others on the board that got together and certainly the finance committee um, from the beginning but this has been the first time that we have had not only the finance committee but other members of the board delve down into uh, just every nook and cranny and so uh, with that and the staff and the manager uh, I just commend you all this is uh, I'm delighted to see this so thank you all very much it's a team effort. So. You betcha. I'll just add one thing. I give kudos to this board for hiring a fantastic GM who's put this together. So thank you, board. Thank you. Thanks, John. Uh, Mr. Hunsicker, would you like to speak at this time or do you want to hold off? Mike Hunsaker, 115 Equestrian Court, San Marcos. Naturally, I have a lot of questions, but I'm just going to center on one for tonight. In reading through some of these documents, going through them roughly and some of them carefully, I noticed there was a question of equivalent EDUs, equivalent uh, dwelling units. And I believe that there was mentioned that uh, an apartment was about seven tenths, eight tenths of a single family dwelling. And the basis of that is, of course, that they use a lot less water per apartment than a single family dwelling. And uh, I look at the sewer monthly charges and uh, residential multi unit is less in a single family dwelling. That makes sense and that's looked even a little high. Mobile home though is a far less using uh, unit and that seemed to be high. Then I went to the monthly rate to serve charges which I'd expect to be uh, pretty much in the same ratios and uh, I see for multiple dwelling units, apartments I assume, and others. For the single family dwelling it's 31 and for the multiple dwelling unit now it's 1826, a huge difference. And then we get into 2018 and it drops to $11.18. Why is there a three to one difference there and also, I would imagine that the mobile home park dwellers, uh, I don't see why they should be paying three times as much or more as well. Uh, I read through some of the definitions of EDU, and one of them seemed to be a misprint of some sort. You know, saying, talking about seven tenths uh, of a single family dwelling for equivalent. Then it said, well, since it's, uh, they only ch cost, take as much, 70% as much water, therefore they should pay 30% equivalent. Well, that seemed to be in line with what the water ready to serve charges are. Seems to be inconsistent with the sewer, and I'm sure that's a misprint in some place, or I can misread it. But the $11.18 per apartment looked <clears throat> rather out of a line. So, and I also noticed, last quick point, in the uh, question of how many EDUs are being added per year, it was in the neighborhood of uh, less than 200 for the last couple of years. And yet, and projected to be under 200 for the next 
couple of years, and we just uh, you just proved adding 496 units for Davia alone. And that doesn't cover a lot of the North uh, City additions, or uh, nowhere in there seems to be any Newland Sierra. So thank you. Thank you, President Althorpe, members of the board. I have a quick presentation <coughs> on uh, rates for you. Um, I'll wait till I'm up there. Today what we're gonna do is uh, present the uh, changes to the draft 218 notice, um, get any input from any further changes on that as well. We'll look at rates, any impacts that uh, rates have on reserve projection. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe Maybe it's me. That's great. Uh, the impact that they have on uh, reserves, and then some financial performance indicators, things that the rating agencies look at, and what we look at for fiscal uh, prudence as well. And then any input that you have for us when we come back to you with the uh, cost of service study uh, and the final 218 for your approval uh, on our next board meeting. That's what we want to try to accomplish today. So this is, you've seen this a few times already, um, but this is the first page of the 218 notice. And uh, again, the example is just for the combined water and sewer bill for an average customer like we show all the time. We wanted to put that right up, right out front. What you also see is what General Manager Pruim referred to is that website where, well, this is uh, average use if you want to have get more detail about your specific account and your impact to your rates, you would go to that website, which is live right now. The next slide is the ready to serve charges. Uh, most of them are staying the same. There's about three or four of them that are going up to five eighths to one inch to inch and a half and a temporary construction meter and the additional unit uh, for ready to serve on the, uh, is going down for the multiple dwelling. That's just the additional unit that, uh, on that one. Um, they still have to pay their charge for their uh, meter. So that's what you've seen before. It's, it might have changed a little bit as we keep refining uh, and things like that. This is what we have right now and agrees to the budget, the rate study and such. For the commodity, uh, on the pages of, on a, probably the third page, I think, second or third page of the 218, we have this broken out. I also added so, so you can see the difference between how many units are included in tier one, tier two, tier three, and four under the current structure, and then how many units are included in tier one, two, and three under the proposed structure, and then the rates associated with that. So in the old structure, the, the old structure, the current structure, um, the five unit was really a carve out uh, when, when the um, frugal use discount went away. Every customer had that five units at the uh, wholesale rate. If you recall, we only passed through half the wholesale rate, so that $3.08 would have been $3.55 roughly if the full was, was passed through. Tier two of the current rate structure was determined back in 2009 on pre-drought, pre-2009 drought numbers, and it was 90% of the average. Tier three was determined on what would capture 90% of the demand. And uh, moving to the proposed rate structure, as mentioned before, and then the cost of service study, the first tier is the average minimum use. So you look at your, all your customers, and we look at the database from 2013 to 2016, and what was the lowest use for every customer? Some was two in a year, some was three units, some was 10 units. We averaged them out, and for the five eighths inch and three quarter inch meter, it was six. We did the same thing for each meter category. And on tier two was, what's the average high? So it's all tied to, nothing's arbitrary, it's all tied to actual customer usage behavior. And then you see the commodity rates that we've talked about before in the past as well. I'm going through it kind of quick, but obviously if you have a question, go ahead and stop me. Uh, Five-year rate projection, we don't look at uh, things in just one or two years. We've got to look out, especially when rating agencies hit us up. They're always looking for, what's your projection? And we have to send them our projection, and which is only prudent uh, to do. So uh, 
what we've done, it, it wasn't a coincidence. It wasn't say, hey, it's a miracle. It came out four, 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 four. No, we've got to smooth things out uh, in order to get there. We've got to take hits in some years and recover in future years uh, when, we, when we do this. So um, we smoothed it, uh, as you can see here, with those rates. Director Mark. I've got one question. I don't know. I, I always try to read this as someone that doesn't know anything about water, because most of the people don't. Um, on the example, um, you show the average single family dwelling using a 5 8 meter using 13 units. When I open up to the chart, water commodity tier structure and units, I don't know the name of the sign, but it's the sign that shows up to one inch. It doesn't um, show anything about a 5 8 to somebody. Oh, uh, right. You oh, told me to yeah. look at 5 8 Because it's the I same I don't see rate. 5 8 here. Yeah, correct. I see up to one inch here. Which, uh, what, what page are you on or what? Um, I'm going five. from the front page to what would be the third page. Oh, you're on the actual uh, 218 notice? Yeah. yeah. Which the meter size, it shows the meter size is up to one inch. But it, you directed me to look at a 5 8 meter. Yeah. But yeah, I don't see one out here. Yeah, we can we can change that first one to be five eighths and three quarter inch. Could you so do that? kind of yeah, spell it out a little bit better. Yeah. Could you make it so they can find yeah, yeah. Good, good suggestion. which one is theirs? Absolutely. Again, the, the average customer doesn't know the size, they don't. They don't. Absolutely. Um, I don't have it in front of me, so if, if you're noting I that, I can make sure I make that change. Okay. Thank you. I'll reflect that change next time. Uh, and then, you know, we, we focus on the average customer. Well, what about a customers that use little water or customers that use a lot of water? What are their, their impacts? And you can get that from going online, but we also presented that here as well. And this is, again, with just looking at 5 8 meter, the most common meter size out there. What if you're, you're only using six units for your low end? Is, is that a requirement to do that by law, or is that something worth throwing in because we think it's great? A requirement to do what by law, I'm sorry? We're, we're showing people... The average customer, which I'm going to guess are 20 out of the 22,000 customers, we're showing the average customers right on the sample. Mm -hmm. But then for the ones that aren't average, we're going a step beyond. I guess what I'm asking is that step beyond a requirement of the 218 process, or do we think it's making it easier for people to understand it? I'm just trying to provide more information. Yeah, it's not required uh, constitutionally. That's not going in the notice either, correct? The Correct. This is just for, for our oh, presentation. Oh, I thought it was going to the notice. No, no, no this is just, just giving, okay. providing you with more information. I'm fine. Yeah. I'm going to put that in the notice. People are going, what? Yeah. No, and this, this presentation is also online under the board uh, information, so it's available to the public. So, yeah, so this shows a low use, average use. High use, which you don't, you don't see really big increases in high use. That's because it's taken it right up to the point where before the third tier kicks in. And then when you look at the very high use, well, half of that usage is at the high tier, tier three. So if you're using 42 units consistently on a 5 8 inch meter, you're, you're using way more than your allotted capacity anyway. So that's, that's very high use for, a, for that size meter. But I wanted to show the drastic you know, differences here. And, and, and this methodology, I know we've had legal look at it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a methodology that, that who came up with who is currently using it? There are the old methodology, rock. <coughs> we have a new methodology. Who came up with it? Who's currently using it? How do we defend it? It's, it's actually the same. We're not. We're still doing meter size. We just tweak the uh, tiers a little bit, so we're not changing uh, significantly. It's still by tier size. There are a few. I I've came up with a list. I didn't bring it with me, but how many did I get on that list? Like twenty or thirty yeah. in California that are using it. It's Nothing that we, uh, I'd like to take credit for inventing it, <laughs> but it's just a way to uh, break down customers by class. Okay, which we weren't doing before. N no, we are, we, we're not changing by meter size. We're, that's our current rate structure, and we're proposing to keep that rate structure with some tweaks to the tiers. So previously, the, the board was considering changing the structure to go to more of a uh, customer type as opposed to a meter size. Correct. But then we 
didn't do that and now we're proposing to continue on the way we have historically. And that, that was because we found from our cost of service studies, right, that the meters was much more homogeneous use for the customers than if we just went straight residential agriculture. That was correct. Yeah, with and this that study, was what we were going to show our nexus if we were to go to court. Do I, am I correct? Correct. I, yeah, that was and, part of and what validates it. Right. We did a, a, a pretty fine-tuned analysis of our own data. You know, instead right. of having a consultant come in and saying this is what's done in the industry. Well, let's look at our own data and see and validate what we're doing, and we validate it. Okay. So, thought we've done a good job of that. But. Thank you. Did we get a rebate from Black Beach? <laughs> no. Or caps? <laughs> Either one of them. <laughs> that that what we just go. looked there at was the uh, five eighths inch meter uh, moving on. Uh, this is a very busy slide, but just to, to show you the impacts across the board. You know, this is. Uh, there's two slides here, one low and average. The next slide will be high and very high, and it's looking at different meter sizes. Also looking at ag, an average example, ag customer. Most of our ag customers have one or one and a half inch meters. Most of our multifamily customers have one or one and a half inch meters. So, and you can see the multifamily going down because that additional unit is going down. And everything else pretty much the same. So our two eight. I'm sorry. Uh, th these two charts that we're looking at here, this is for our benefit. Is this what I would find if I go to the site as well? Uh, it is, I think the, I can't remember if the rate presentation is on that same. I, I think it is. It, it might That's be, yeah. yeah. If you want to get into detail, it's really interesting. Yeah, so if you go to that same site that's on a 218 notice, I'm you'll see like five things you can click on, and I believe this is one of them. Okay. So you can get that detail. And it's also in a cost of service study that's online, online too. So it's in well. two places online. But experience tells us that most customers don't care about the other customers, they care about themselves. No, no, yeah. the no I customers. think we're doing the right thing. The 218 yeah. isn't going to have all of this. And Correct. No, but I was just curious because this would be very daunting to most people. Yes. But yeah. if someone really wanted to look into it, I just wanted to say, was it available? Absolutely. For that. Yeah. Along Thank with you. the rate calculator. Did, did you have a question? Yeah, so the 218 process is going to have uh, page three, I guess we call it page three, okay. four, and five? Yeah, it's going to be a three, four, five. Page fold out. Eleven this, this, this is the one here, isn't it? Correct. This is what we'll oh, okay. see. That's I'll going to be It was, a, the la, it was starting on page 118 of okay. the board packet. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other thing that we wanted to look at was a stress test. Well, a lot of, a lot of these rates are predicated on demand. We, you know, we have to make assumptions about demand. It's a lot of you know, guesswork going out of here. The one thing that's great about projections is you're always wrong and that's okay. But we wanted to see, well, what if you're off by 10% or 5%? on your demand, what's the fiscal impact? And the stress test here shows that if our demand comes in at less than 10%, what we projected, it's about a $1.2 million hit. And the reason why it's not such a huge hit is because we're also not buying that water if we're not selling that water. So it kind of, it's just a net impact from that. Just the opposite, if, we're, if we come in and we sell 10% more than we thought we would, well, that's we increased by 1.2 million. So it's not a huge range but important to look at. With these, we've looked at these before. These have been refined for the changes we made in the rates. This is 2017. We don't have 2018 for our, uh, information for the other agencies. So when you look at our proposed, that second green line, even with the increase, this is for just the low users, six uh, units. Uh, we're below the median, below the average. When you go to average, we're uh, the, the fainter blue uh, lines are proposed. Uh, we're, again, below the median, below the average, even before the 2018 rates kick in for the other agencies. With the high, we're still, you know, towards the left of this graph, again, because there's no tier three water for a high user when they go beyond high, when they're using more than the average high user. Then you see them shift up there. They're carrying the burden of the desal rate, of the desal cost. 
And again, this is before 218, so I imagine that uh, 2018 rates kick in for the other agencies. So we probably won't be all the way out there, but we'll be uh, pretty high for a very high user. And this, again, is an extreme example. This is 42 units on a 5 8 inch meter. I want to just transition into the impacts to reserves. What we've, we've tried to do is, yes, we took a hit to reserves to try to smooth these <coughs> rates and to keep them down as low as possible. But we showed, and one thing that changed as we went through the process of refining is we said, let's go out 4% all the way instead of tapering down so we can show the rating agencies some improvement um, going out on a timeline for this five-year projection. And what we did with this is water, and then I'll show you one for sewer. So this is the water rate only, the uh, ready to serve and commodity only. And we end up, you know, last year we were, we were trying to fund 100% of the replacement reserves. That was a little ambitious. This uh, winds up, for, it's the same for water and sewer, right at the 65.5 percentile between this, the floor and the ceiling of the replacement reserves. And then jumping to sewers, you can see pretty much the same uh, level over there, but we needed to, to bring up the rates in uh, 2021 in this projection and 2022 to show some improvement and show some recovery of the uh, reserves. Um, I got a question. Okay. If you go back on the water. Yes. Why, why are you showing uh, water bill increases of six percent. I, th I thought previously you were showing kind of a straight four percent. Well, the four percent was the average combined water sewer bill. Oh, okay. So now I'm splitting out just water only. Gotcha. So sewer zero, but water six. Okay. Near one. Thanks. And then finally, what I have for you is the, the financial performance indicators. Uh, what we look at uh, for fiscal prudence to make sure we're not uh, trending downward on any of these things. Debt service coverage is big, and days in cash is big. The blue line refers to the right axis, uh, operating days in cash. And we learned going through this, we just. I'm sorry, quick question before you move on. You're showing the water, you're showing the sewer. Where's the ready to serve? It's in the water. The, it's already included in the water? Yeah, this is ready to serve and commodity together. This slide shows the cost of the average bill for a ready to serve and commodity. So this is what you see if you didn't have wastewater services there that your bill this is what your yeah, water bill. Okay. Exactly. So, so our days and people that, oh, sorry. that uh, people that are either billed by the county or if they don't use our sewer service their rates going higher. People just get water only. Correct. No. Yeah. Yeah, they'll be their impact will be more than the 4% stated here. If it's a 5 8 inch meter, it's different for different meter sizes, but the average one will go up 6% if there's no okay. sewer on their bill. But that's okay with the 218 not to show those people that? It, it's on there. It's on there in the detail. Yeah, on the page 3, I think, has all the tables, so they'll see that. Yeah. Yeah, it's only a few customers, and we show the average for the for most of the customers, and that's okay. about over eighteen thousand. You know, Director Martin brings up a good point, though. Maybe on the two eighteen, when we define what a average single family uh, user is, we don't say that they also have re received sewer services too. So you uh, say five, I think we have it on there. So wa combined water and sewer. Bill? Well, it shows combined water, but the asterisk at the bottom just says the average single family residential bill assumes a five eighths inch meter using thirteen units of water. Oh, and we can add and a, receives wastewater services. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Are you going to catch that one? Yeah. I think I should have bought my two eighteen notice fifteen. I'm sorry. No, no. Oh, thank you. Hey, Tom, you have lost me there for a second, so I'm sure you, you're going to be able to get me back on track here. So if water is going up next year 6%, and you're saying wastewater is staying flat? Correct. Okay, so 6 minus 0 is still 6, right? Well, so t yeah, well, you explain have to how this works to me. How okay. do you get the 4? Uh, where's an easier slide to go to? It's a weighted average. So yeah, portion so portion of your bill is going up six percent. Portion of your bill isn't going up at all. And when you combine those two together and factor it in, it averages out to four. It's an overall increase of four percent in your bill. So the sewer is thirty-eight dollars and ninety-nine cents. Okay. If you would, add, let's say it's okay. Let's just change the slide right here and say, well, how do we go from six to four percent? 
you add 3899, I don't have 2017 showing, but you would add 3899 to both of those uh, numbers, uh, and then the change would be an enumerator. The change would be the same, but the denominator would be greater now because you added sewer in. Okay. Yeah, so the total bill goes it's, up to 115. Correct. You, start, you're, you have a smaller denominator when you're looking at water only. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I got you. Uh, and I don't know the answer, but uh, uh, it seems to be a bit deceptive. Maybe that's okay with the 218 process, but their water rate is actually going up six percent. Mm -hmm. uh, their combined commodity rate and, and ready will serve only go up four percent. Correct. If they use both, that's correct. If they don't, it's going up six percent. Yes. So what what percentage of the Five eighths slash three quarter inch meters have both service. Do you know? Uh, oh, the bulk of them. There's only I can't remember how many. It's, uh, the, a lot of multifamily is on our sewer bill. Just because we bill on uh, property tax, it's it's still an increase. You know, so they're still there. But the pure water only customers, there's there's not many. There's very few. I don't know how many we have, but it's mm -hmm. probably I'm going to guess hundreds, not thousands. So it's a oh, minuscule really? percent. I'm not. I, I came here looking through all this and was thinking that this would be a 10 minute meeting because we've been doing all the finance meetings and, and I thought I had a pretty good grasp on all this. And I'm not. I'm, I've lost a, a significant level of comfort with what just kind of came out in the last couple minutes. Um, one of the things, you know, we talked about when at breakfast was I was really excited that we, you know, I was actually going to suggest at the end of this that we need to put on. In the first paragraph of our 218 that we need to talk about the water authorities increase because that's been in the news you know for the last couple of weeks at 3.7 and I, I would you know I couldn't I was excited that we were going to be able to say uh, as you may have heard on whatever news source that the water authority raised their rates to us at 3.7 percent and then we were going to but we're only passing on an additional three tenths percent, but that's not actually true. We're we're, we're actually passing on um, on two point three percent. So, well, if you recall from last year, we only pa we're starting very low because we were only passing through half the wholesale rate increase currently. So even yeah, though the I'm water not, authority's all in, I, think, one I, I know what you're saying. I'm just saying. I, I think Director Martin's onto something. This is not. It's not completely transparent. At least from my comfort level, I'm not. I, I, I came here thinking we were going to going to be a slam dunk. I think we need to go back to the drawing board, and 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 how we're going to either. First off, is the board prepared to pass along a six percent increase in water? Because, because I'm not, but I don't know if there's you know three three that are. I suspect there are, but but, um, but then then the, the second part of that is how do we communicate that? And I think if we're going to do that, if we're going to pass a 6% water increase, we say that we're passing a 6% water increase, uh, not a 4%. So, and we can talk about it's a 6% water increase, but we're keeping, you can go into your whole methodology in the 218 of, but sewage is staying <coughs> flat, and it's going to come to an overall <coughs> increase of 4%, if, if, but I don't, I'm not comfortable with um, how we're currently communicating this. We're also showing that we're doing no increase on sewer, yet in your preamble earlier, you explained to us that next year we're going to be looking out for going out for more money, more bond money for sewer. For capacity, not for replacement. It's the sewer side, isn't it? Uh, most of them are, are sewer side, but they don't impact the rates. That's, that's on the capacity. restricted capital facility funds. So I believe we showed three years of no increases in wastewater, and then the outer two years projected, we show some the three and four. increase, three and four percent. Right, but we haven't had uh, increases in wastewater, I don't believe, for the previous two years either. Correct. I think we haven't added anything for that, uh, which means great job, Ed. Um, but uh, is that realistic? Well, unfortunately, we can't stay that way forever. So, you know, we're projecting in, year, like uh, General Manager Prum said, projecting in years four and five from now an increase. Yeah, what I'm trying to wrap my head around is 
water has the same increases as sewer does, uh, basically. I mean, the, the sewer rate, chemicals cost more, employee benefits go up, all of that's happened for the past five years, and yet we've had no increase to the rate for that. Well, the, the big difference is, is the, the wholesale been water costs. Yeah, yeah, what's been added to us. For, yeah, wholesale water costs increase adds, in conservation yeah. is really you know, thrown Wholesale in. water is what's 55 or 70 percent of the yeah. total bu water budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's good. Last year was a double digit increase that we only passed through a, a fraction. It was actually no, I, I understand that increase. Yeah. I understand the increase in water completely. I get it. But, I mean, that's I'm the difference between get water and sewer. Though. No increase in sewer for five years. The employees that work there get benefits. I mean, were we over? Because nobody added costs to sewer. We don't have a wholesale commodity increase going yeah. up by double digits. No, but to, to no, but Martin's we do point, have employees. The, 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 we do have trucks. The labor costs have gone up every single year. Everything else has gone up. Why hasn't that gone up at all in five years? I don't understand. Well, I think That's we've what? been able to absorb those increases and still have adequate reserves in the wastewater fund with the rates that we charge. Sewer is also very, very stable because it's a, it's a more of a fixed charge. We don't have to worry about fluctuations. So the demand. reserves are too high. No, no. The no. Now you no, let the, now you let them come down. The ready to serve is too high. You're going to see the reserves dip a little bit, but we're trying to smooth the rate, and you won't see the increase to sewer till. This was projection till years three and four when we try to bring up the reserves. Years four and five, excuse me. Okay, let me uh, wrap up and then I'll, I'll take comments and direction on the 218 notice. But just to, to wrap up here, uh, again, the, the days in cash, what does that mean? If no money was coming in at all, how many days can we operate? The meeting we just learned is up to 499 days. We're at about 270-something days at the end of the projection. But we take a hit to that, but because we smooth the rate. Uh, it was noted in our um, Fitch surveillance that they just did. But again, they do note that we improve at the end or stabilize. So even though it was below the median, we passed on that one. The other one that they look at a lot is the debt service coverage. Uh, and again, we're taking a hit to the debt service coverage, trying to uh, keep the rates as low as possible. But at the end, you know, to smoothing that rate, we show a little bit of an improvement at the end. So, and that was helpful too in getting our rating as well. And that's all I had. And what I'd like to do is, is get a consensus on any changes to the, the 218 notice in particular. And uh, I'll any just other reiterate at least the first part. I'm not, I'm not comfortable with the six percent. So. You can count me as a no right now on that. But but most importantly, whatever we end up doing, I think front and center, loud and clear, our, our notice should point out the Water Authority increased our rates 3.7%. Okay, just on a comment on that, that's, it's, it's different for every agency, but we can research well, what, 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 it and see what ours is. We don't know. Absolutely, yeah. We no, know, we don't we, have that readily available? No, we, we will have to look at the uh, all-in cost for us when we look at the uh, fixed costs and the commodity. But it's easy to calculate. I just don't have it with me today. Hmm. Yeah, but every, every well, agency is, is different. Hopefully it's higher. Yeah. We can include language in the Prop 218 that indicates that CWA is a big driver of our costs. Yeah. And plus the all-in costs are projected. I, I'm not familiar with the 3.7% number, but when you look at their projections, what they project for next year is 8.93% increase. So again, we look at smoothing and look over time too. I'm just, I, I, I can Google it and find the four or five news agencies that have been reporting 3.7. I don't Correct. know where. That's the all in for the county. Okay. Yeah, so I, I'm we're, assuming so that's county, the all yeah, in for the so county. So we're, we're, we're talking averages here you know, in a bunch of different ways. So whatever it is, if it's higher, then that's great. Mm -hmm. But let's put it on there in big red bold letters, San Diego County Water Authority. Here's their meeting times, go talk to them. Well, I mean, maybe if you extend that, maybe we should say how, how much, I mean, it's a lot bigger wholesale increase last year, and yeah. <coughs> we only passed through a half of it, so, and, and yes. I mean, that's worth noting also. We're starting very low, yeah, at a very low point. And we're trying to keep this to, uh, I realize, no, I know, but pages to. That, that's the, probably the only thing that really matters. I yeah, mean, our, ours is going to show pretty high if we go from what we're recovering now to, yeah. With the call and buses, yeah. if you recall, that's we had this discussion last year that when we tried to raise it and it didn't pass, 
I specifically said, hey, we can do this now, but it's going to come back and bite us later. And well, here it is. And the bite is not so difficult, but um, it, 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 you have to accept what the rate increase is. Whether you like it or not, you cannot not take a, the full amount last year and somehow expect it to be not caught up in years to come. So, uh, you know, 6% is where it's at. But the overall is four. I'm uh, quite comfortable with showing four, particularly if we put in there whatever our That's portion true. of the Water Authority increase to us is. And I, I would like to say I, I agree. I think what we've shown through these months of research is that whether it's six percent water increase or four percent of your entire bill if you have sewer, it's realistically we, we're not. We're not asking for exorbitant. We brought that we're falling in the middle of the reserves and the purpose of reserves is like planning for an event. I'm gonna say college or a wedding. And sometimes you're gonna take a little bit out and hope you make it up by the time it comes and, or you don't, you get hit with a big bill or you um, have a lot and you get to coast on it and it happens nice and easy. But we've come down on our reserve quantities. We've come out, we've checked in on everything I feel uh, is Director Hernandez is saying, this is really a very honest, very open, and determining the percentage is not what's important to me. To me, what is important is that I can say, this is why your rate went up, this is what you get for it. We're not deferring and gonna hit you in seven years. We're not um, not having out the vehicles that we need. We're not putting you at risk in that way. We're, we're giving you reliability by, the, the diesel. I mean, there's things that we pay for that we just pay for because we want to have a great agency and we want to do the service, and that's what we're we're asking for. I don't think there's there's minimal. I mean, minimal, and what I think is minimal is my own personal. Uh, if anything, I could change here. So minimal. I think it's real. I support it. It's just it's the truth. That's what it is. It's the truth. Correct. Uh, I think I'd, I'd like to know, seeing as this is not urgent, time sensitive in, in any way, shape, or form, um, uh, I'd like to know how many how many people pay sewer separately. That should be easy to figure out. Um, to see what that affects, and maybe someone come up or help come up with a paragraph underneath explaining that in the last two years the county water authority's rates have gone up 5.2 percent, or whatever that happens to be. Um, and that due to our due diligence, we've been able to keep our percentages as low as they are. I think explaining it a little, I don't know how you'd explain the difference between the sewer and the water without making it, people won't understand it at all. Yeah. So I don't know how you break it down any more than that. But there should be maybe a paragraph in there where we explain your water rates have gone up this much through our wholesaler, we pay more for it. Somehow in layman's terms, so people get it. Yeah, and I think in more than just one year. I mean, because it's... The last two years. Yeah, yeah I'm thinking it's, it's it's the last two years. years. Still All catching right. up, yeah. We're catching How much has gone up in the last two years? Because that's what we're actually recouping right now. Yeah. Um, so, I, and I don't know, I don't, I, like I said, I brought it up because I was curious about it, but I don't know how many people are affected by it, but I'm, I'm guessing from what numbers I've seen, it's less than 1,000. The majority of 21,000 people, there's a 6% increase in both combined. A uh, 4% increase in both combined. Total bill will be 4%. Yeah, I, I don't, splitting yeah. hairs with a thousand people doesn't make sense, but uh, uh, but I'd just like to see that uh, and see how many people actually are affected by that. So okay. it wasn't. Uh, so to the to the 218 notice, a little blurb about boom, wholesale water, uh, San Diego County Water Authority wholesale costs. Yeah, you know, instead of why a rate increase is necessary, uh, that, that's like, well, I mean, you add under there, you had a paragraph there last time which you took out, which was had some stuff you were supposed to take out. But just in there, you know, the county water authority, our wholesale provider, uh, in layman's terms, explain it, uh, uh, has increased their rates 6% in the last two years. 5.1%. Um, just for clarification, are you talking about the, the very first page of the 218 or, or yeah. where Y is cost going? Yeah, right, right under, under why right rates are increasing. Why rates yeah. are increasing. <laughs> oh, right, okay. right under that, the number one rate reason that rates are increasing is water cost. So let's point yep. that out. And what it's actually gone up in the last two years. 
Yeah, I think that's because last year we didn't. Uh, I think we we added something for the wholesale cost, but it wasn't much. It's was half the yeah. increase. Yeah, it was. It was. Nothing. It was a different structure too, so it's kind of makes it a little complicated. Yeah, so we don't want to bring up last year, but changing the yeah, just tier structure. Tell them what the percentage. Just how much the water cost us last year? How much it's gone up last year to this year? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what that. You have any idea what it went up last year? Uh, last year was 20, 27 percent because we we're, we're very different than the rest of the county because we we have to re, we're charged on a desal the full pop so we carve out uh, about 25 percent of our demand is the 33,500 acre feet from desal and so it gets a little yeah you can't get that you can't know, get yeah. that to the woods <laughs> and, and I think it's pretty complicated. Can you, get that can you back out the because this board and this district made a decision to go with these house so that's that's different that's separate from what's been we understand where we're, where, where we are with the desal agreement it's separate from what the water authority is putting back on us year after year with increases mm -hmm. well we pay the water authority for the desal no I understand but but yeah. we're, are, we're locked in at 30 years and there's only like what two and a half percent year Correct. The, the, yeah. and between so back, two and a half and so back that out and then everything else is what water the water authority is is increasing our imported water. Yeah. That's really what we're talking about. I'll come up with, with something, and, and yeah. maybe uh, General Manager Pruim can send it out. Yeah, you, so you take well, there's no rush on it. Yeah, we have the whole yeah. year. Yeah, you know, we have until uh, November to send this thing out. And, and whatever the rate is, we need to put it in there. I don't like this kind of, you know, if we're not if we're not increasing the the sewage part of it, the wastewater part of it, then then we don't have to 218 it. So let's leave it out of the 218 altogether and just talk about what we are increasing and if we're in, if, if if the majority of this board is going to put that kind of increase on our customers then let them live with the with the communication of that yeah we need a consensus you usually want to show the, the yeah. full impact and we'll be transparent full I, I would recommend we keep the wastewater in there i think it yeah. sends a good message that we're it, it just further further clarify yeah. Yeah. yeah i can and do I the clarification on the, the water, very first opinion, page but yeah. i'll clear them up well sewer always muddies the water <laughs> it's true. Okay. Uh, are there any other? I also sent out. Uh, you, you have the actual rate. Uh, if you're really bored, you can look at the actual rate model, and that that's been revised and, and refined for the change in the uh, effective date, and uh, and that's up to date now. I, I just have to update the uh, cost of service study to reflect the new tables. You changed the effective date to when? January one is now the effective date for ready to serve. When? The ready to serve used to be on July. Every July one, we'd increase sewer and ready to serve, but we changed that. So, well, we want to reflect that in the cost of service study as well before we get you know, the final draft. And so, that would be the next step. So, the next time on, on June seventh, hope before June seventh, we want to get you out of uh, get your input into it. Why, why, why do you think there's a rush to judgment? I just want to know how your brain works on that. Uh, we want to have the cost of service study adopted at the same time the budget is, just because they're related. Uh, we don't have to, you know. We could. Uh, plus, there's there's still a notice period, you know, for the uh, public hearing. Days, yeah. So we've, we do have time, but because time. we want to, uh, especially with the the uh, cost of service study being predicated on the budget, and then the budget is predicated on the revenues uh, uh, traded from the rates. So right, it's only. But what what's the time sensitivity that I'm missing? Just that they, we want them at the same time. It it makes sense because. to have. The cost of service at the same time because when you adopt the uh, budget, you're adopting the revenues that were the, calculated the, in the, the rate budget study. drives the rate, right? Yeah. But uh, kind uh, of drive uh, each other. The me, cost and the budget me, drive. This the, is not yeah. the federal government. If we didn't adopt the budget on time, nothing would change, right? Uh, well, we don't have author. We, we are authorized to spend would be based on the old budget, right. most likely. Yeah, we've never had a situation where we adopted the budget beyond the fiscal year. Um, we, we don't have authorization to spend. I understand, but if it were to backslide a month or two, it really wouldn't make a difference, would it? Are you talking about the budget or the rate? Uh, it's the budget approved. It would, it would make a, well, we, we, have a, we have another surveillance coming up by S&P. If we didn't have a budget, I think it'd have something to yeah, say about that. Yeah, I think if you start missing budget deadlines, it's not. No, I, I understand you want to hit your budget. You want to get out. I understand that completely. Yeah. I'm not arguing, I, I, yeah. I get it. But I'm just saying, yeah. it just seems to be that's beyond fiscal impact. Life would go on. I think we can separate. Federal government two. proves that life goes on. It does go on. When you don't approve a budget, it's not the end of the universe. Only to be encountered. Right, but 
what's what's there's no reason not to. I agree. Exactly. That's I the agree. point. There's that no was the point. To. There you go. But if we miss it for some reason, okay. in the world. No, they're and they're, they're the ones that give us our credit rating, so yeah. yeah. You gotta kinda keep them happy. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Tom. All right. so mm -hmm. That's all we had. Okay. So. Oh. That's it. That's okay. It. Yeah. Easy peasy. I think we got, we're done. We got some feedback, so we'll incorporate that in, and we'll get the new package out to the board. I think it'll be posted uh, next Friday. <coughs> this one, but the following Friday. All right. That's okay. We're adjourned. Oh. Board, are we having any board member comments or anything like that this time? Around? That's a workshop. Isn't it? it is a workshop. We're done. Okay, we're adjourned. Okay, here we go. One, two, three.